What is up guys, how you doing? It's another day, I'm out here in the sun, it is hot as hell, and uh, yeah, just wanna, it's, you know, it's not your average video, it's not me reacting to stuff, well I am reacting to something, something really traumatic that, um, if you're a football fan you'll know all about, uh, Christian Eriksen um, collapsed on the pitch during a Euros match on Saturday, and yeah, I mean, there's been so much talk about this. Just glad he's okay, because that's one of the most horrible things you can wish on anyone. Like, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. And, you know, it's like, it puts things in perspective about life. Like, what's important, what really matters. Family, friends, loved ones, you know. And the people that are there for you when you're in need. And credit to his Denmark teammates. Um, they were all there, you know, protecting him from all the cameras um, that are ridiculously nosy. Like, um, it's ridiculous how, as humans, we want to see something so bad, you know. Um, when there's a streaker on the pitch, they'll cut the feed straight away. And yeah, BBC can blame you far and, you know, but surely they could have put some replays of Euro 96 on or something just to stop the focus on that and that traumatic moment and then they're zooming in on his wife um, with two of the Denmark players around her um, trying to console her in that moment when nobody knew what exactly was going on we at home did not know um, but I'll put it in perspective for you really like for me I, w I was watching like the first half this was just before half time I've gone in the other room come back and I just see uh, Hoiberg one of the Danish players in tears like and the crowd in tears, like, everyone distraught, like, players crowding around Ericsson, trying to work out what's going on. Um, that's the only reason I kept watching. And then they go back to the studio, and then, of course, everyone in the studio is distraught. Um, don't know how, why they, they, they made them speak on it. Um, they should have just cut it to Gary Dineker, and he, he just, like, cut it to, like, a, a replay or something. Um, but no, they carried on broadcasting for it. A fair bit of time. Apparently they weren't ready in the studio. Um, but yeah, back to the whole situation. Christian Eriksen um, played at Tottenham for over six years. Um, was a legend at the club. Um, and won the title this year with Inter Milan in, in Italy. Um, you know, went on to bigger and better things. And I was just so honoured to have him at my club to see him play. The free kicks, the talent, you know and just all-round nice geezer um, and probably the best Danish player like of our time or ever up there with Peter Schmeichel and uh, Laudrup but um, yeah as if you know your, your football as well as I do but of course anyone around my age will remember Fabrice Mwamba who did die on the pitch and uh, was revived and saved he was dead for over two minutes or three minutes um, and similar thing, a teammate rushed over, grabbed his tongue, so he didn't swallow his tongue. Same kind of situation. Um, but I didn't actually see when Ericsson collapsed. I saw, seen footage of it elsewhere. It, it was, I found it on TikTok, ironically. Um, and then it was taken down within the hour. But you know, so, you see something like that, it's like, yes, it's very horrific, it's horrible. I was saying repeatedly, like, it's the worst thing I've ever seen on TV. Like, why are they continuing this? This is sick. It's like when you're on the motorway and people slow down to see a car accident. Why? Because you want to see someone bleeding or injured or whatever. I don't get it, but it's like human nature to be nosy about these things. I just want to know what happened to a player who I've respected for years, like, even before his Tottenham days. Um, you know, it, at Ajax, he was a a legend even then. And it doesn't matter who, who it is, whether you've heard of the player or not, whoever it is, it's still a shocking thing to see. And I think the fact that he was on a football pitch probably saved his life because, you know, if he wasn't there, he wouldn't be so close to a doctor or paramedics or people to perform CPR. You know, it could happen to anyone on the street with no friends or family around. Um, and Going through something like that, like, 
the filmer's wife is just not on. It's like a personal thing, trauma they're going through, and it's broadcast live around the world. Of course, in Denmark, on their t TV stations, they cut the feed pretty quickly. Um, or, like, didn't show it anyway. But you can see when players are huddling around to shield him from the cameras, that kind of means, you know, stop recording. Then the difficult for the commentators to explain the whole situation, you know, calmly, because they can see what's going on too. Um, I mean, initially I thought it was just a bad injury, a broken leg or an injured back or something. Um, obviously, a lot worse. And whether he had an underlying health condition, heart condition, like something you didn't know about, it's possible. Don't know any more than that. Don't know if he had any past history. Obviously not. I mean, surely we would know. Or, I mean, you wouldn't really be a, be allowed to play. Um, with, you know, there are players who've had to stop playing because of heart problems. Um, and yeah, and... No, it's just like... I say it's traumatic, but at the end of the day, he was saved. His life was saved by some people who act quick, acted quickly. You know, the ref did well to realise straight away um, and stop the game, you know. They gave him the choice, play the game the next day or that day. Like, I don't know how they could have gained any sort of focus after going through that. You know, all in tears, all the energy it takes to go through something like that and then just go out and play and try and win. Obviously they didn't win and Finland didn't celebrate when they scored. It's a bit unfair, you know. But I'm going to be rooting for him and his family. Hopefully Ericsson can be healthy, you know. Whether he'll play football anytime soon, who knows. I don't know if they even let him. Um, but at the beginning I just thought the worst. You know, it could have been anyone though. It could have been... It, it's sad whoever it is. But like, I was like, no, like how... Like 2020 is bad enough. Was bad enough. I can 2021 bring this. You like? Nah, I couldn't believe. It. I was in shock. And I think you all were. And just it makes you realise what is important and what isn't. And it was no longer just a football match. But I do believe that saved his life because there were people on hand to really help and deal with the situation properly. Bearing in mind, first international game refing for that ref. I can't remember his name, but he, I think he is Br British. Um, so, yeah, difficult from all sides, really. And, uh, yeah, just hope hope for the best. And hopefully we get some brilliant games in the tournament where everyone's safe and, you know, not, you know nothing on that scale. Well, you can't really avoid it, but I'm saying, like, it was dealt with very well apart from the broadcasting but um, I'm just glad he's okay because like you see the way he falls over like I don't, to have seen that live like you can't blame the BBC for that because you didn't know that was going to happen but it's the aftermath that they kind of messed up and it's down to what someone's mistake an editorial mistake fair enough we make mistakes it's not like they did it on purpose like some people may be trying to say um, but yeah, that's it really. Just wanted to talk on that a bit. Uh, a player that's, you know, very talented, but like I said, it doesn't matter who you are, that's a very difficult situation. As a teammate to witness that, like, I'm part of a team and like, anyone's ill, we're all like, we all feel, you know, down for them. Um, however minimal it is. But something like this is like, that is a true team. Whether they won that game or not, it doesn't matter. Like, that's togetherness. And that's what, what football is about, really. Togetherness. Regardless of winning or losing. You know, togetherness on and off the pitch. More than just acquaintances on the pitch. And I felt that with my own team. Uh, if you're part of a team in any sport, you probably feel that too. You know, so... All the best to Ericsson and his family, wishing them well. Um, and, you know, I'll be cheering on Denmark. Um, and we'll see. Of course, I'll be cheering on Italy first and maybe England, depending who gets further. 
But I'll end it there, guys. I'm going to have more reaction videos coming soon. You know, um, more people having car crashes on the road and random other stuff coming soon on the channel. Um, take it easy, guys. Enjoy the weather while it lasts. You know. Peace. Oh, it's hot. Ooh. It's a scorcher, guys. Before, and I usually mess up. But I learned, you know what I'm saying? I come back stronger. You know, I'm not talking ignorant. You know what I'm saying?